Welcome back to another episode of Rock Boys Football. Michigan football is back. Boys just finished watching the spring game. Recapping it right here. Before we even get into it again, I just want to say thank you to the Michigan fans. Y'all know we love talking Michigan football. And you guys have been just absolutely awesome with the support. The last month for Michigan football has been phenomenal, whether it's on the recruiting trail, whether it's on spring practice, and the support you guys have been showing absolutely means a lot. So if you do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel and get locked in because there's going to be a lot of recruiting news in the month of April, and we appreciate all the support you guys have shown. Dill, let's get into it. Let's start on the offensive side of the ball like we normally do. Got to see a decent amount of J.J. McCarthy. What are your early takes from some of those guys on the offensive side of the ball here? Yeah, I mean, I think the obvious thing was J.J. had the one throw that was obviously just missed it high and led to the pick. And But once he kind of settled in, you saw like what you kind of want to see and what he's got to do really consistently is hit those throws to Cornelius Johnson. And and again, him playing in a spring game, when you take his legs out of the game, it's hard to kind of tell what he can do just because, again, what he does with his legs, extending plays and running the ball – it is so much of his game, but like what you kind of saw with the arm, it's there. You, He's just got to be a really consistent passer, I think, at the end of the day. So, so impressed with some of those throws. Like I, Making that throw to the from the outside hash to that boundary, so impressive. And that's like kind of the differentiator, I think, with a lot of college quarterbacks. A lot of college quarterbacks don't have that arm. The elite ones do. J.J. McCarthy certainly does. You got to see him throw on the run a little bit. More of the stories, I think we know what we have in J.J. McCarthy. I kind of want to talk about a little bit of these pass catchers. A couple of new names, a couple of guys I want to highlight. You know what you have with the running back. Shout out Benjamin Hall, though, at their running back spot. You know you have Blake Quorum, Donovan Edwards, who obviously weren't playing. We don't need to see them play. Benjamin Hall, true freshman. And that's a big one because the fact that we didn't have a third guy who was in any way dependable last year at, yeah. at any point in the season, really, like that – that certainly hurt us in games like Illinois and some yeah. of those other games. It's just like, and even TCU, frankly, like you need another another guy at times, and and we just didn't have it. But Benjamin Hall, he had the like look to him again, like a obviously play like play right around. now, and he's got. I mean, for that big a guy, he's he's shiftier than I kind of expected. But I'm really looking forward to hopefully somebody solidify that third back spot it looks like it's going to be him but someone's got to do it and Devin Gardner on the call said like he's got uh a really good patience for such a young cat like a lot of those guys are just used to running around people he knows how to set up his blocks wait for that play to develop really impressed knock on wood we don't get to see a running a a third running back a lot I mean just with all the injuries with, with Blake and Donnie last year we have to see a lot of third running backs Hopefully we don't have to see as many third running backs. But it's like if, if you if you want to give one of those guys a game off or like yes. even take a little off their plate because they Michigan's probably gonna run the ball a fair amount and you just need a third guy at the end yeah. of the day, especially in college football. Like you don't see any teams playing who do like Georgia, Bam, Ohio State. They all have go to a guy like Dallin Hayden with with Ohio State when you need your third guy. And we just Michigan didn't have it. And again, like you saw what from Benjamin Hall, like the 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 shine like the the flashes that make you think he might be able to be that and, and Khalil, Khalil Mullings also looked like a little bit more developed than running back like early in the season last year when he switched over he's just a batter ramp he looks like he's getting a little bit more feel too I love the running back room arguably the best running back room in the country what I think we wanted to see as Michigan fans was let's see a little bit more explosiveness from the passing game and again I think a lot of Michigan fans just want to see the wide receivers be so involved we have one of the best tight end rooms in the country, too. I mean, Colson Loveland looked good, but I thought the transfer A.J. Barner looked phenomenal, and, and Hibner looked really good. Michigan's going to run a lot of two tight end sets, and they're going to use a lot of these tight ends. You're not going to play if you can't block. All these guys can block, but I think what separates them is they are very, very big, and they're athletic, and they're hard to deal with that. I mean, to me, the guy who really stood out is Hibner. I mean, yeah, he he has, he's got a different gear than all those other guys, I think. Aside from, I think Loveland's going to be incredible. Obviously, he only played a little bit early, but Hibner had a kind of a special burst, I think, compared to the other tight ends and in the ability to stretch the field and make big plays. I mean, he caught that slant coming over and and he ran, ran by guys like he had the look of those high level tight ends who go play in the pros. So I, 
I'm excited to get him involved. Obviously, last year was a really crowded room with Loveland stepping up like he did. But I want to see him play. I want to see him play a lot because I think he is the one guy or one of those guys in the tight end room who's going to make those 30 plus yard plays. and in, in Michigan's offense like you're you need a lot of tight ends we got I mean four or five tight ends that I feel very very good about taking a look at the wide receiver room like Cornelius Johnson looked good when he played and Roman Wilson didn't really play much and you kind of know what you have with those guys if you ask me like what was one of the more disappointing aspects of the spring game is I didn't really see an emergence of, of the young wide receivers Tyler Morris I don't think suited up Darius Clemens very quiet. Christian Dixon had a tough drop. Peyton O'Leary. <laughs> Shout out Peyton O'Leary, wide receiver. Really one awesome. um, that's still like probably the biggest question mark, but I'm not putting too much stock into it because, again, Michigan is going to use a lot of tight ends. We, we've never really been an offense that relies on a wide receiver one like a lot of other college football offenses do. It's kind of a pass catcher by committee, and we got a lot of guys who are capable of catching footballs for Michigan. And that'll be the thing. I At the end of the day, what you, you still do want to see, and I know Devin Gardner was really beaten on it, you want to see one of those young guys step in. Yeah. And he, he's going to be the, the alpha dog of the young guys. And it, getting Cornelius back is huge because he's going to be number one. I, I He's played really good football for Michigan now for two straight years. But, again, you, you probably want to see, I think, Clemens or, or Morris emerge. And, and those are two really young players who – I think both have potential, and, and especially Darius Clemens. Like you still looks the part. This, even in this spring game, now you saw the, the couple of those moments where it's like, okay, this guy's big; he can catch, he can he can run, and, and that's kind of what you want. And, and what honestly, Michigan hasn't necessarily had in the past is a guy who can kind of make those plays down the field. But it, you're still kind of waiting on that. And I think you're right. I like just being honest. That is probably the one thing I think everyone wished they saw more of. Getting to the offensive line, and it's going to be really hard to do this without just shouting out. I mean, we have legit 12 guys that I think would be starting on most Power 5 football teams across the country. Uh, any any offensive lineman, I know that's who you're really taking a look at. What offensive lineman? I got mine, Raheem Anderson. I thought he stood out in a big way. What offensive lineman kind of caught your eye here? Yeah, I mean, Raheem Anderson, obviously, I thought looked really good, too. I, You know who I thought played really well is Giovanni Elhadi, and I think we kind of knew – we what know he was there. coming in, yeah. but he's another guy who I think he's going to be tough to to kind of get off the field because I, I think the one thing you didn't get to really see all the guys who are going to be competing for the tackle spot, aside from Barnhart, I don't think any of those other guys are really going to be in the mix to start. But in terms of what you saw from the interior lineman position, I, that's going to be a really hard job to like to keep a guy like El Hadi off the field and, and keep a guy like – Raheem Anderson off the field. And I know Drake Nugent's really good, but it's going to be a battle. Yeah. That battle plays out. And it's, it's, I mean, that's frustrating. It's such a good problem to have because you have Trevor Keegan, Zach Zinner, both guys that we think are future. They are future NFL players. Both probably would go in the NFL draft had they declared um, coming back on the inside. And then Raheem Anderson, Giovanni Ahadi. I thought both of those guys looked extremely good. It's an embarrassment of riches for Michigan on the offensive line. And, now the question is, and there, there isn't a person I trust more than Sharon Moore to figure this puzzle piece out, get the best five going, and, and I'm very confident that you, he, just Sharon Moore is going to figure that out. One last thing I want to add is, and, and I, I don't know that he's ready to go yet just because he's still on the smaller side, but uh, Tristan Bounds is a guy who, like, you kind of see the flashes of – yeah of that like level of athleticism you need to play really good. Yep. And again, you, you watch today. I think he, some of those guys who, I mean, Josiah Stewart was giving everyone a problem, but yeah, he's he looked like a little bit overmatched in, in, in terms of strength. But again, as he keeps filling it, filling out mm-hmm. and getting to that kind of college body, I, I think he's a guy to watch because you kind of looking at the young tackle spot. You just haven't got to see a whole lot of them just because we've, had kind of the same guys. And a guy like Andrew Gentry, he's like 22 years old. He's still, I mean, like what, going into his second year with the program. So he's got plenty of eligibility left as well. I, you feel so good about the offensive line heading into 2023, but you feel really good about the future of this offensive line. Flipping over to the defense side of the ball, and I, I want to highlight the defensive line because I thought if you if you asked me like what was the biggest mismatch, the defensive line on both sides of the ball were absolutely dominating. And the first guy we're going to take a look at here is, is Josiah Stewart, who's an absolute freak. And that's that was what we all wanted to see at the end of the day is is can 
because even last year they didn't Michigan didn't have that guy who won consistently on the edge. But Josiah Stewart, I don't think he was blocked one time. He lined up on inside, played on guards. He, he was dominating the tackles. He he's got a level of power explosion and, and then again the skill and, and be, being flexible on the edge. He he's gonna be a handful. His first and bend is nuts. Absolutely nuts. And one thing before we start highlighting more individual players that I thought was really interesting and something I'm extremely excited about was the one thing that we kept kind of banging the table for last year in terms of what do we want to see from this defense? We want to see turnovers, a little bit more havoc being created in the backfield. You can tell Jesse Minter and he even at the halftime interview, like we're getting after the ball. Like we want to create turnovers, something we did not do last year very well. You saw a lot of different blitzes. One of the more interesting things, you saw a lot of different formations in terms of like at one point, Big Daddy Cam Good was rushing from the outside. And so you have like, you, you, you move Josiah Stewart inside, you rush Cam Good from the outside, a lot of different looks. And when you're looking at how to create pressure, how to create some havoc in the backfield, there's two really recipes, right? One, our players are just better than you and we're going to win our one-on-one -on -one matchups or we're going to scheme up blitzes. And I thought Jesse Minter is clearly – taking a hard, long look at how can we get some more schemed up pressures. I thought he did a very, very good job of it, and I'm excited to see how that defense looks come 2023 in the fall. Yeah, I mean, I mean, all the quarterbacks were pretty much under pressure a fair amount in this game, and again, a lot of it was, at the end of the day, it was Josiah Stewart just because he, when he was on the field, again, he was constantly in the backfield. I thought Kenneth Grant looked really good on the inside. Yes. He was able to push pockets and generate pressure in that that sense that again, another thing you've seen with Michigan is you haven't had that D tackle who really pushes the pocket on, in terms of pass rushing. And Mozzie Smith was a really good player, but a little bit more of a run stuffer. I not as productive in the pass game. And, and obviously, I have got better into his senior year, but it never quite became that guy. I think it again having a guy who's really tough in the middle and, and can can push guards and centers around. I think that's going to be. Another thing, just just again, being able to rush the pass at a really high level, I, I think that's going to be an important part of Michigan. Lots of take just like we talked about with the uh, for one slight disagree with Mozzie Smith. I thought he was pretty damn good, but one thing that I think is very similar to the pass catching argument that you're talking about with the pass rushers is it's by committee. I mean this this deep this group is very deep, and just to highlight some guys that really caught my even Jalen Harrell, who is like the least flashiest player on Michigan. No one ever talks about him. He's so good, especially in the run game, like setting the edge, getting in the backfield. I think he's one of the more under-talked about players on Michigan's team. Braden McGregor's another guy. Mason Graham. Chris Chris Jenkins. Chris Jenkins is probably the best guy in our defensive line. Didn't even talk about him. We were rushing him from the edge a lot in that five technique, too. One other guy I want to highlight, Derek Moore. I think Derek Moore is going to be a starter, and I think he's going to be outside of Josiah Stewart. I was most impressed with him off the edge because he has some – power in those hands for a kid who's going into his second year in the program yeah that, that could certainly be a good little tandem because obviously josiah stewart isn't as big or he yeah he's not yeah Ryan Dion. i mean Derek moore is as big of a defensive end as you'll really see but you weren't sure when he came into michigan you thought he might be playing on the interior because he came in like 270 like, this dude yeah. is a dude. he's 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 giant but he again he moves well enough at that size and and, and just the strength is is it seems hard to deal with for these tackles. And one more, not to just beat the drum on this defensive line, but Cam Good. Like, that's about as much playing time as we've seen. I thought he looked pretty good, too. And so well, one of the questions was the, the depth on the interior. I'm feeling a lot better about the depth. It's going to be so hard to play, though, for like, even a guy like Cam Good. I mean, you look at that top four, that's, that's four guys who might all be playing in the NFL at some point. Yeah, just because of how good how good early that race uh Kenneth Grant in, in Mason Mason Graham have become. There Mason Graham is I we didn't see much of him, but we didn't need to see much of him because we saw from him last year. Like Mason Graham is stunned. Getting to the linebackers, obviously Jude Colson didn't play a nurse in the injury. I think this the story of it is two things. I think Ernest Hosman looked really good. Like you can tell what's special about him. He flies around the football field. The Kyle Hill Green, good to see him back out playing some football. Was one of the guys I was nervous um, you know, to see if he was going to transfer. But it seems like we're going to be playing kind of a, a lot of uh, nickel. So only two backers on the field. And we got like five backers that I feel really good about. Mikey Bear, Junior Colson, Ernest Hosman, Nikai Hill Green, Jimmy Rolder, and then Micah Pollard. Uh, I think he might play some of that more like nickel hybrid linebacker. But he was flying around to make these plays. 
Yeah, especially as you look towards the future, because again, I think this linebacker room is another room that's going to be really hard to supplant Colson and, and uh, Ernest Hausman. Yeah. Yeah, Ernest Hausman. But you, you look, I thought, yeah, Micah Pollard looked really good. I thought Jaden Hood looked really good. And obviously, he, he's going to be a junior coming or a third year guy. Obviously, he'll be a redshirt. But some guys you thought, like, again, just seeing that depth come through a little bit more, because even that linebacker position wasn't very deep last year when you thought, like, going to Jimmy Roller as much as they did. And I think Jimmy Roller's me a guy who might be really good too some at some point. But again, you watch. That wasn't like him as a true freshman. I don't think we'll, like you don't want him starting. Yeah, that. You, that was a position that we weren't deep on, right? I mean, Jimmy Rolder was having to play some meaningful snaps as a true freshman. That's not no knock on him. It's just like that was that was kind of out of necessity. The depth in this linebacker room, especially kind of going more to that nickel, um, looking a lot better with Nikai Hill Green back healthy and Ernest Hosman in the transfer portal. He didn't lose anybody. And so you're just adding some depth to that group. And then the secondary, that's probably the biggest question mark. And we're going to start with the big story of the offseason is Amari Walker, who got beat a couple times. There's no secret about that. Looks the part, though. He's long. You saw the three cone if you were watching the broadcast. He has all the tools. And he's sticky, too. I just think some of the ball skills and a little panicky when the ball's in the air. Mike Sanders still said, like, it's going to come. It just takes some time. Like, it's important to remember he's only been playing that for, what, two months now. Give him some time. I really do think he does look the part, though. And I'm interested to see because I, I don't think that side of the field's in any way locked up. I, I no. think I thought Miles Pollard looked really good, and he's got that big, long frame. Jaden so, McBurrows, too. Jaden McBurrows, 100%. I was going to get to him. It, like, looked really physical, obviously, in the run. So that's certainly that's probably gonna be the most one of the more heated battles in, in a place where I don't even I think all three or four of those guys could could go and, and and you just don't really know. I feel a lot better about our depth with that position. That was like our big question mark is who is gonna play opposite Will Johnson. Like I feel a lot better about Jaden McBurrows playing some meaningful snaps or Marion Walker playing some meaningful snaps. You start to feel a little bit better about that. Miles Pollard as well. The safety spot, I loved. Right? Rod Moore, we didn't see, but he's going to be a stud. McCarty Page, I think those are going to be the two starters we see at the safety position. Another in- interesting thing to know, you saw safeties moving around a lot too. A lot of corner blitzes, a lot of blitzes from the safeties in the secondary. I love it. Like We're trying to create some pressure. You obviously know Mikey Sandstrom is going to be locking down that nickel, but I feel really good about a bunch of safeties we have in the backfield as well. Uh we got a lot of ball hawks and playmakers. So in, in that safety spot again, that's kind of a no doubter. It's it's going to be Makari Page, Rod Moore. Great. They're going to play, and they should be playing the whole game. Obviously, you saw what Makari Page kind of developed into towards the end of wow. the year, where he really took that spot away from R.J. Moten. And he, 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 those two are going to be the guys. I'm like, I, I want to talk about a Zeke Barry coming in, and, and someone's going to need to replace what Mike Sandra still does because that position, yes, it has gone from Dax Hill to a. Uh, Mikey says, yeah, I mean, and it's an important I, position. It's really such important an important position. position that Michigan uses, and in Zeke Barry kind of had that feel. Yeah, like he want. Like yeah. He's making plays in the run. I don't know that we got to see a ton of him in coverage, but that's kind of what he came in as. Obviously, more of a safety. So I, he's kind of the guy you. Won't, I, I'm kind of interested to see. I'd like to see if he can play a little bit this year. If Michigan can get up on on teams a little bit. But they're going to need to find someone to fill that spot. That safety group is, is pretty deep, obviously, with Cody Jones and Keon Sab. But one of them I'd like to see kick down play that nickel. I, it looks like they're going to go Zeke Barry just by how they were playing it today. All right. Before we wrap up here, I'm going to kick it to most. What player are you most excited for that you didn't re- – how about most new play, like either true freshman or portal edition that you're most excited for. And we did not plan this pre-show, so I'm putting you right on the spot here. Who you got? I mean, the obvious one is Josiah Stewart. Pass, it, pass, it really pass. isn't even close because, I mean, he was just so dominant. But honestly to me, and I think you poo-poo the third running back spot a little bit, I think I think Benjamin Hall. I'm looking forward to seeing somebody be able to take some reps that isn't named uh, Donovan Edwards or Blake Quorum because that I thought that, that dynamic – killed us last year honestly if you think about it it put so much work on Blake Corum I agree and Donovan Edwards again I'm he obviously wasn't healthy all year he didn't play today but you just can't you can't do what we did last year I don't want to ever see one of those two taken more than 20 snaps a game unless it's a Carries. playoff game or Ohio State in, in that to me when you don't have a guy you can look at and say go get us five yards 
and they, Michigan really didn't. I, I think that to me was probably one of the more. Uh, yeah, and it was a problem because they had Blake Corm at points taking 35 carries a game, which is just, I mean, I Blake Corm's a workhorse. He could obviously handle it. Um, and not obviously, unfortunately, the injury, but you don't want to see it because one of our most important games, November, like we, we have to be ready to rock and roll. And given Blake Corm, if, if one of them, again, knock on wood, goes down, like you can't be given Blake Corm 35 touches a game. It's just too much. So having guys step up, we didn't get to see much of Cole Cabana, but man, Benjamin Hall looks phenomenal. If I had to answer that question, I, I, pro, I Josiah Stewart's the obvious answer, but I'm very excited to see Ernest Hosman too on the defense side of the ball. I think he's going to be a, a it's so fun to stink because he's, again, just coming off his true freshman year and was special for Nebraska. Honestly, I was really impressed with the spring game as a whole. Again, Michigan fans, can, we just appreciate all the support you guys have shown. So if you do enjoy the content, lock in for some more Michigan content. We're obviously covering a lot of recruiting in April, so stay locked in for that. And if you do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel, and we'll talk to you all later. Peace.